I'm kind of dreading going back to my hotel room tonight. You see, there's a female waiting for me in there, and I really don't want to see her. She's been bothering me ever since I got here. She usually comes at night, then she waits for me in my room. That's her. She's also known as the Anopheles Mosquito, and she's a little female assassin. Here in the West African country of Guinea, she and her girlfriends are particularly deadly. They kill more people and make more people sick in Guinea than any other disease. And it's easy to see why. This place is a club med for mosquitoes. Thick vegetation, lashing rain for six months of the year, and an evening buffet that's a feast. Thousands of Guineans who don't sleep under mosquito nets. Even if you want to buy one, you can't. They don't sell them in the markets. In Labe, a major city, I found a few old nets being sold with second-hand clothes. They cost okay. more than six dollars. Most Ghanaians could eat for a week on that kind of money. The nets I saw weren't even treated with insecticide, and they were full of holes. I was surprised to learn some people here don't even know that mosquitoes cause malaria. They think certain foods do. Here in the mountains of Guinea, the most popular lunch is lachiri, a couscous dish with milk and sugar poured over the top. People love this stuff like it's ice cream, but some people believe that the milk in it ignites the malaria that's hiding in you. Uri Kamra has heard all of these theories and then some. In nearly three decades working as a health agent in remote areas of Guinea, he's diagnosed more cases of malaria than he cares to remember. He pulls out his register and starts reading me the numbers. During one three-month span, about 750 people with malaria passed through his health center. And here's one more, because 13-year-old Mariama just walked in. She'd fallen sick in class that morning. Uri examined her and said she had malaria, and that she probably caught it because she didn't sleep under a mosquito net. When Ghanaians get sick with malaria, they come see people like Mr. Jallo who sells traditional malaria medicine in the market. The crushed tree bark in the plastic bags is a hot seller during the rainy months when mosquitoes are everywhere. He says it not only cures malaria, but also hemorrhoids and many other health problems. Other Guineans prefer the roots and the bark of the Sinja tree, or the leaves of the Tigabati. The forest here is full of natural remedies for malaria. But what was really needed was something to prevent malaria, not treat it. That's why CRS took part in a national campaign to distribute mosquito nets to children under five years old. The kids also received a vitamin A tablet and shots for worms and measles. CRS and its partner, Caritas, were in charge of giving out about 300,000 mosquito nets. The campaign was so popular and people wanted the mosquito nets so much, they'd walk miles to the health centers where they were handed out. Like Jenabu Jallo, a 40-year-old woman who lives in a remote mountain village. Let me boil her life down for you. Jenabu's never been to school. She married at 16 and had her first child at 17. And since then, she's had a baby about every two years. She's had eight children. But all that's typical in this part of Guinea. But her average day isn't. Three times a week, she lifts a basin with about 30 pounds of vegetables onto her head then walks about 52 miles round trip from her village to the city of Labe to sell her produce. That means Jenabu walks the equivalent of 24 marathons a month, or about 200 marathons a year. And she does all of them with a smile on her face and one-year-old Mariama Tupe, who weighs almost 20 pounds, tied to her back. Jenabu got three mosquito nets, one for Mariama Tupe and two for her twin boys, Al Hassan and Al Husseini. They are the first ones they've ever owned. After the hike back to the village, I spent the rest of the day with Jenabu. She never stopped working. You should have seen what she had to do just to make dinner. She hauled water from the well. She threshed grain with her feet in the traditional manner. Then she pounded it and then cooked it for the family, all while watching the kids. Jenabu's life is exhausting. 
The last thing she wants to do is scrounge for money and hike back to the health center if Mary Amatupe or the twins catch malaria. That's why she's so happy with the mosquito nets. In the long run, they will save her time and money and keep her kids safe from Guinea's nightly visitors.